Hi, my name is Dan, and this video supports my online sushi course on Udemy.com, and you can learn more about the video lectures in the link below. Kirimala roll is something I try to make every year during the fall season. It's not very common in the States, so this is something I want to share with my viewers. And maybe you can try this for yourself after watching it. Or at the very least, I bet you'll look at mullet in a very different way the next time you go fishing. To start, the first thing I'm going to do is remove the pelvic fence on the bottom. So I'm going to cut it just beneath the first layer of the muscle, being careful not to go too deep so I don't end up cutting into the roll. And then next, I'm going to use a much smaller knife with the front taped off. This way, it won't slice open the roll as I cut the belly open. In Asia, they actually make a special knife just for this purpose, and the tip of the knife is welded with a metal ball. Or, another tool you can use is a scissor with a bow nose tip, like the one you see in the video. And, to be honest with you, I'm still a novice at this. There are pros that can split this fish open and take out the roll in a few seconds. The next step is to gently pull out all the innards. And you can see that I'm being really careful not to use too much pressure, so the egg sacs won't bust open. There's a thin black lining inside that's attached to the roll, and this needs to be separated. And once everything is out, the intestines can be pulled out quite easily. From here is the most challenging part. I need to remove the roll sack along with a piece of the belly meat attached to it, instead of just ripping it off completely, because you'll end up breaking the egg sack and then spill all the eggs. So this part takes some practice and precision, and this is where having a really sharp knife helps a lot. So here it is. This is one of the most valuable products from the Gulf of Mexico. It's a real beauty, isn't it? And the larger the size, the higher the price I'll fetch. And this one is on the larger side. I would say this is probably worth somewhere in the $75 range once it's been processed. And then the next step is to partially split it in half. There is a very thin lining of membrane that connects the two pieces together. And this needs to be pulled apart ever so gently without breaking open the sack. And obviously, this part takes very steady handwork and being patient. And the next step is to push out the bloodline that runs underneath the roll. This needs to be done so the finished product has a cleaner look. And this is quite easy to do. Just gently apply a touch of pressure along the blood vessel and push out the bottom. Now, no matter how good your knife skill is, there will be some pieces that get tear open or accidentally cut. And to fix this, use a piece of twine and simply tie a few over knots just below the area where it's cut open. And this is an important extra step because later on, the roll is going to get pressed with a lot of weight. And if this isn't corrected now, a lot of the eggs inside will just get pushed out later. Next, the roll needs to be cured with a generous amount of salt. This will help draw out some of the moisture and also creates a safer product for the next step. And don't be afraid of using a lot of salt because in some operations, they'll actually just pour layers of salt between each stack. So what you see here is really not that much. The point of doing this, aside from bringing out the flavor, is to also create an environment that's difficult for the bacteria to grow because this will need to be air dried out in the sun from several days to over a week before it's finished. After salting it, put it in the fridge for exactly one hour. And this is a good amount of time because you don't want it to become too salty. If that happens, the flavor will get covered up. So one hour is pretty standard, but it also depends on the size of the product. The larger the egg sac, the longer time it's going to need. But usually one to one and a half hours is good enough. So here you can see after an hour in the fridge, the salt has thrown out a lot of the water. 
which is what you want. And the Surface has developed a more durable leathery skin, and this is good because they're going to get pressed later by quite a bit of weight. But before we do that, the salt needs to be rinsed off with cold water. And the next thing I'm going to do is press it into more uniform shapes. Here, I'm going to sandwich the pieces between two boards with added weight, and the plastic film is to prevent the roll from sticking to the top board. Now, in a large-scale operation, processes will actually stick multiple layers of fish roll on wooden boards on top of each other, sometimes over 3 feet high, and then place concrete blocks on top of it. And with that much pressure, they can achieve really flat pieces without busting it, but for home users, this simple technique is good enough. And once they're pressed, they need to be dried outside in the open air directly in the sun. And historically, in places like Taiwan, this is done during fall, when the weather isn't blazing hot and there's a constant flow of cool air. From here on, the roll will ripen as they dehydrate, and it needs to be flipped over every few hours in the sun until sunset when they're taken back inside and stored in the cooler, and then repeated the next day. And this needs to be done over several days. For this batch, I dried it for only 5 days. But for some operations, they'll dry even longer, past the 10 day mark, until the rolls have lost most of their moisture to the point where it can be graded. Some others will use the dehydrator to speed things up. But usually in Asia, it's normally dry for about a week with constant care. So if you're wondering why this stuff is so expensive, well, it's because it's very labor intensive. So here's a finished product that's ready to eat. This is pretty much gold from the Gulf of Mexico. This piece right here will probably fetch around $75. And not only has the colors changed to a beautiful dark orange, the surface has developed a really nice oily glaze too. And normally what I do is vacuum seal each individual piece and store them in the freezer until I make another batch next season. And here you can see that there is a spectrum of different shades of colors. And this is dependent on what stage of the roll was when the fish was harvested. For example, the darker color ones means that the roll was more developed than the lighter color. And typically, the more golden the color, the higher the price of command. Now, there are three ways to serve it. You can eat it completely raw, bake it, or serve it seared. My favorite way is to slice it thin and bake it for a few minutes in a toaster oven. You can even sprinkle a dash of sake over it to enhance the flavor even more. Another method is to remove the outer layer of the egg sac and then sear the crust with a torch. This won't cook it all the way through, but it does help bring out more aroma. In some restaurants, the chef will actually pour whiskey over it on a plate and light it on fire and then let it sear the crust for a few minutes. Um, I tried that before and didn't think it added a whole lot more flavor. Um, I mean, it was a cool effect, but it was kind of a waste of good whiskey. And just like before, I'm going to cut this into thin pieces. Some people cut it much thicker, but that really depends on what kind of texture they like. And typically in Taiwan, which is where I was originally from, it's often served with slices of daikon radish that's eaten together with the mullet roll. And this is served without any dipping sauce. It's very salty already, so there's no point in using soy sauce. Um, I would describe the taste of the baked one on the bottom as having the texture of overcooked fish, but yet very savory and sweet at the same time. Also, the texture is sort of kind of comparable to cooked crab eggs. The sear one on the other hand is much milder in taste and doesn't have the same texture. Personally, I enjoy baking it more since this does intensify the savory flavor even more. Now, I'll admit, this isn't for everyone. Most of my western friends that try this normally don't ask for seconds. 
but in Asian culture, this is a highly prized delicacy and is very popular during fall and winter season when it's often given as gifts to friends and relatives. So if you're adventurous enough, I say give it a try and see for yourself. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is actually a preview of my course on Udemy. If you want to learn more on how to make sushi at home, please check out the link in the box. There are over 40 video lectures that cover many of the basics, such as learning how to cut vegetables, making sushi rice, how to make different types of sushi rolls, and learning how to cut fish for nigiri and sashimi. Can you hold that lid right there? Yeah, the lid can't move anymore. You got it.